Welcome to the AI Guide, where we focus on the human impact of AI, and there is no bigger story than this story yet on human impact of AI. None bigger. I'll explain why in a minute. So thanks to The Guardian for this article. AI race heats up as OpenAI, Google, and Mistral release new models. So this is just last week, folks. Launches within 12 hours of one another and more activity expected in the industry over the summer. OpenAI, Google, and the French AI startup Mistral have all released new versions of their frontier AI models within 12 hours of one another as the industry prepares for a burst of activity over the summer that being summer 2024. The unprecedented flurry of releases come as the sector readies for the expected launch of the next major version of GPT, the system that underpins OpenAI's head, ChatGPT. So the first of these new releases came only hours after Nick Clegg appeared on stage at an event in London, where he confirmed reports that the third version of Meta's own AI model, Llama, would be published within a matter of weeks. Seven hours after Clegg left the stage, Google's Gemini Pro 1.5, his competitor's most advanced LLM, was released to the general public with a free tier limited to 50 requests a day. That's plenty for most people. An hour later, OpenAI released its own frontier model, the final version of GPT-4 Turbo. GPT-4 Turbo and Gemini Pro 1.5 are multimodal systems. These are the new cutting-edge ones, able to accept more than just text. Each can take images, while Gemini can also accept audio and video. And that's the way it's going. Universal acceptance regardless of format of input. In the early hours of the morning in France, Mistral, an AI startup founded by a number of Clegg's former colleagues and Meta's AI team, released its frontier model, Mistral 8X22B. Unlike its two American competitors, Mistral was released through a simple download link to a 281 gigabyte file. The company, like Meta, takes an open source approach and publishes its AI systems free for anyone to download and build on. That approach has been criticized as potentially dangerous since it leaves the developer unable to intervene and stop its systems from being used for harmful ends, nor to pull models offline if vulnerabilities or biases are discovered and need to be fixed. Others, including Meta, defended as ultimately leading to better outcomes than systems kept in the clammy hands of a small number of very, very large, well-heeled companies in California. So you, my viewers know that at TED AI last October, this is, was one of the great debates, open source versus proprietary. Meta's Llama 3 is expected to be released initially in its smaller less powerful versions, according to a report from The Information. Building upon a release of the company's most advanced frontier model this summer, however, it may face stiff competition. OpenAI is believed to be planning a similar time frame, i.e. summer, for its next GPT model, GPT-5, with the company's chief operating officer, Brad Lightcap, telling the Financial Times it would be coming soon. And I'll have a specific comment about GPT-5 in a minute. However, experts have queried whether the large language model approach shared by all frontier AI systems might be hitting its limits. We hear a lot of people saying, oh my God, we're going to get AGI, artificial general intelligence, within the next year, said Meta's chief AI scientist, Jan LeCun. Jan LeCun, by the way, is one of the fathers of modern AI. LeCun was responding to a claim from the ex-AI founder Elon Musk. I'll get to that in a minute. It's just not happening. We have AI systems that can pass the bar exam, but they can't clear up your dinner table and fill up the dishwasher. We have systems that manipulate language and fool us into thinking that they are smart, but they cannot understand the world. I'll have a bunch of comments about what Jan LeCun just said. In a minute, caveat, Jan LeCun is one of the foremost experts on AI, but I still will have what I think are some interesting comments. 
Instead, Lacoon suggested researchers needed to work on what he called object-driven AI with the ability to reason and plan about the world rather than just work on words alone. That approach, he said, might generate AI systems with truly superhuman abilities, Lacoon said. That is more of a vision than anything else, he added, but it's making exponential progress, so I'm pretty confident that we'll get there, he that's one of my comments that was coming up, and I'll talk more about that. Then a second short article from The Guardian also, Elon Musk predicts superhuman AI will be smarter than people next year, that being 2025. His claims come with a caveat that shortages of training chips and growing demand for power could limit plans in the near term. I'll have comments on all this stuff. Superhuman AI that is smarter than anyone on Earth could exist next year, Elon Musk recently said, unless the sector's power and computing demands become unsustainable before then. Comments coming. The prediction is a sharp tightening of an earlier claim from the multi-billionaire that super intelligent AI would exist by 2029. Remember that that is... Ray Kurzweil's famous prediction. Whereas superhuman is generally defined as being smarter than any individual human at any specific task, superintelligent is often defined instead as being smarter than every human's combined ability at any task. That is not a reassuring thought. My guess is that we'll have AI that is smarter than any one human probably around the end of next year, Musk said in a live streamed interview on his social network X. The was made with the caveat that increasing demands for power and shortages of the most powerful AI training chips could limit their capability in the near term. Last year, it was chip constrained, he said. People could not get enough NVIDIA chips. This year, it's transitioning to a voltage transformer supply. He means power company transformers. In a year or two, it's just electricity supply. In 2023, Musk predicted a five to six year runway for super intelligence. Musk was vocally concerned about the ramifications of that. Speaking alongside the launch of his AI startup XAI that year, he said, if I could press pause on AI or really advanced AI digital super intelligence, I would. It doesn't seem like that is realistic. So XAI is essentially going to build an AI in a good way, sort of hopefully. Musk said, it's actually important for us to worry about a Terminator future in order to avoid that Terminator future. A year later, now in 2024, an XAI is firmly trying to lead the development of superintelligence. In a recent interview, Musk said the latest version of his chatbot Grok AI was on par with GPT-4, the leading model from OpenAI. GPT-4 is more than a year old and competitors have already met or exceeded its capabilities, with Anthropic's Claude 3 Opus generally seen to be the new market leader. The entrepreneur's predictions, that's Elon's predictions, are infamously freely made. In 2016, he wrongly forecast that within two years it would be possible for a Tesla to drive autonomously from New York to L.A., that same year, he said his SpaceX rocket company would fly to Mars in 2018. Whoops, it still has not. And in 2017, Musk suggested his Neuralink brain chip startup's first product would be on the market in about four years. He was only two years off on that. The first human received an implant from the company seven years later. So a million comments here, all of them extremely important. Number one, I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. I believe AGI actually exists. It's just not been revealed to the public. Now, this is early AGI, a precursor, and it's not better than a single human at every task yet, but it's better than a human at a number of tasks, a significant number of tasks. So it's a limited AGI, but I do believe it already exists and we're just not being told. That's number one. Number two, the biggest impact of AGI I've talked about before is going to be psychological. When human beings realize we're no longer the smartest, this is an existential mental change for human beings. We're used to being the top dog on the planet for tens of thousands of years now. 
very quickly that will be over. That is going to freak many people out. It's going to be interesting to see the social problems that that causes. I have likened it to aliens landing. It will be that big. GPT-5 specifically, I believe it is an interim step to AGI on the language model side, a big interim step to AGI. Now let's talk about what Jan LeCun at Meta was talking about. There are people who have already developed AI algorithms that can manipulate the physical world well. I've talked about videos of those. There's the humanoid robot in the Amazon Fulfillment Center perfectly filling orders. There's the Toyota Research robot videos of the thing loading and unloading the dishwasher, the thing that Jan LeCun said an AI can't do yet. Well, yes, it can. Look at the Toyota Research website. So Jan LeCun did say that he believes that that problem will be solved because it's improving exponentially, and that is 100% true. Now, to Elon Musk's prediction. For sure, because Ray Kurzweil has been accurate on about 30 predictions made 30 years ago. So I have very high confidence in his predictions. AGI will be here by 2029, and that is at least an AI that is capable of performing at any human task better than a human. I think that's quite realistic based on where things stand today and could be here sooner. And this will be a true AGI, not a limited or partial AGI like I was talking about with GPT-5. My final comment is that I've repeated this often from what I saw at TED that was the single thing that blew my mind more than anything else. When one of the speakers said, you understand that once the first AGI exists, it can create the next better AGI on its own. So we are entering wholly new territory when this occurs, but we're getting there super fast, super fast. Check out the short on humanoid robots that's posted yesterday. The changes in the world now will be stunning. There's no other word for it maybe astounding. <laughs> so thanks so much for tuning in. If you like this episode, please like, subscribe, and share. Also, please support us on Patreon. We really need your support. We cannot do live events at cutting-edge AI conferences without you supporting us on Patreon. It's just not going to happen. Why? Because I have a day job that I'm tethered to until I get your support on Patreon. This channel can be much, much more than it is with that support. So thank you for supporting me on Patreon. That's it. Take care. Have a good rest of the week.